So this is what you should know after completing the first step of our element cards project. Um, one of the biggest things to know is the Bohr model. So electrons are organized in energy levels in the electron cloud. Remember, that's the area outside the nucleus. Um, you always start filling it up in the first level closest to the nucleus, and that can hold up to two electrons. First can hold two electrons. The second and third levels can both hold up to eight electrons. Um, in the fourth energy level, it can hold more electrons, but we're only going to have to go up to a total of two. Um, and like I said, you start closest to the nucleus, and then you work your way outwards. And these are the electrons that we're representing as little dots in the um, energy levels around the nucleus. So here is what our first 20 elements should look like, our Bohr models. And then there's numbers underneath the element name. That is the electron configuration. And the electron configuration is just how many electrons are in each energy level, with the first number listed being the, the energy level closest to the nucleus. So for example, hydrogen, it only has one electron, so there's only one dot in the nucleus, and the energy, um, the electron configuration is one. If we looked at oxygen, oxygen has two electrons there's oxygen in the first energy level and then it's got six electrons in the second energy level and so the electron configuration is two and six um, for a total of eight electrons argon here argon has two electrons and then eight electrons that's full and then eight electrons that's full as well, so 288 for the configuration. Okay, so that is Bohr model and electron configuration. Your Bohr model should look like this. If they don't look like this, double count everything, make sure that you have done that correctly. Organizing the elements, let me make that a little larger. Um, so the main way that the periodic table is arranged is by increasing atomic number. That is the main way. So they go left to right, the numbers go up. So they start with one, hydrogen is number one, helium is number two. So hydrogen is number one, helium is number two, and then we come back down to lithium, that's number three. Goes over to neon, which is number 10. Comes back down to sodium is 11 over that way to argon is 18, so on and so forth. So it's increasing. Um, groups or families are vertical. Vertical goes up and down. So up and down. So I will show you the groups on this one here. Okay, so here is a group. Also note, groups are also called families. There would be one group there's another group, there's another group, there. Notice I skipped the middle section. Um, those are the transition metals and they do form, they do have groups and things like that, but we're not gonna wor really um, worry about those. Um, you talk about those in a more advanced um, chemistry class. We're gonna focus on um, skipping. So we skip the transition metals there in the middle. We just skip them. Um, there's a lot of exceptions to rules for the transition metal. So for right now, we will not focus on those. All right. So um, for the groups, you number them across the top. So we said this is group one, this is group two. 3 through 10 are there in the middle. So that's why it jumps to 13 above boron. Okay, and then it goes, you count over, this is 18 on the last one. So 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, and 18. All right, so they get numbered across the top, but they're vertical columns. Groups go up and down. Periods are horizontal, which means they go side to side. Okay, so your periods are, um, they go side to side. 
like this. And then because they go side to side, they get numbered along the left hand side. Okay, just like that. Um, we kind of ignore the bottom two. I'll tell you about those in a little bit. Um, but they get numbered along the side. Two, three, four, five, six, seven. There are seven periods. Um, and the reason we kind of ignore the bottom two is because they fit into these last two uh, rows. They're just kind of if we would to put them if we were to put them in there, the periodic table would be very wide, um, and so it's easier for them to just come down here um, to the bottom. So they are included in six and seven, but we just put them along the bottom so that the periodic table is not too big. Okay, um, and they're also not included in uh, the group number, so we also kind of ignore them on that side as well. Okay, so this was the, these were the periods. All right, the group numbers, sorry, the groups go uh, up and down. And they correspond with the number of electrons in the outermost energy level. Those are called the valence electrons. That's an important vocab term. So group one has one valence electron. Group two has two valence electrons. Um, remember, we skipped those transition metals. So group 13 has three valence electrons, and group 18 has eight valence electrons. Um, except note that helium is at the top of group 18, and it only has two valence electrons um, and not eight. As the group number increases, so as you go from group one to group two to group three, the number of protons and electrons also increases. So let's get a little more specific about helium. So helium, you should notice that helium is different from its group because it only has two valence electrons and the rest of the group has eight. So that's um, neon and argon for us. So helium, while only having two valence electrons, has a full outer energy level. Its valence shell is full um, because the first energy level can only hold up to two electrons. So even though it does only have two, that energy level is full. The valence shell is full. The other elements in group, t group 18, excuse me, also have full outer energy levels or full valence shells. Sometimes we use that word as well. So the important part about group 18 and why helium goes with group 18 instead of group two is that group 18 always has full outer energy levels they, their electrons are their valence electrons are full so that actually makes them very special and their name is the noble gases you may have heard of them um, we're going to do the family names in step two um, certain groups have specific names um, but yes the group 18 is called the noble gases you may be familiar with them Periods, the period number, remember periods go side to side, corresponds with how many energy levels are used in the Bohr model. So for example, period one, which is hydrogen and helium, they only use one energy level and they're in period one. Period two goes from lithium to neon, they use two energy levels and they're in the second period. So you can see how the pattern goes. As the period number increases, so as we move from one period, period one, down to period two, down to period three, you are also increasing the number of energy levels. Some other important info, metals and solids are on the left side of the periodic table. Um, fun fact, mercury is the only metal that is a liquid at room temperature. Nonmetals and gases are to the right on the periodic table, except hydrogen is all the way on the left above group one um, because it has one valence electron. Um, most of the nonmetals are gases. As you move down the periodic table, though, they do turn to solids, so all the gases are going to be towards the top. And then the trend is that as you move down a, a group or a family, 
they start to turn to solids. Um, another fun fact, bromine is the only non-metal that is a liquid at room temperature. Um, so bromine and mercury are the only two elements on the whole periodic table that are liquids at room temperature. Everything else is either a solid or a gas. Metalloids are substances that have characteristics of both metals and non-metals. Um, they're sort of in between, and then that's also where they're found on the periodic table is in between the metals and the non-metals, and they tend to form a stair step on the periodic table. I'll show you that on the next slide, and all of the metalloids are solids. So here is a periodic table that has the metals, the non-metals, and the metalloids labeled. Okay, so all of the light blue are the metals. And you can see that they make up the majority of the periodic table. Um, they're kind of in the middle and left, but we say the left side. The non-metals are the ones that are bright yellow. They make up the right side of the periodic table. And then don't forget to include hydrogen in the non-metals as well. And the metalloids are the green ones and they form the stairs. As you can see, I highlighted those. You can see the stairs there that they form, and they are in between the metals and the non-metals. And some of them have characteristics that um, blend a little bit more towards one side, so that's why they're slightly different colors. Like polonium, PO is more a bluish green, and astatine, AT, is more of a yellowish green. Um, and that's because their characteristics lean a little bit one way or the other. Okay, so those are your metals, your nonmetals, and your metalloids. And you will need to know that the metals are on the left, the nonmetals are on the right, and the metalloids form the stairs.